Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So in today's episode, I've got a bit of a different one for you. Yeah, we're going to be talking about some turn zero wins. Yeah, not even turn one wins, turn zero wins. It is possible to win before the game actually really starts for some players. And actually, when I'm saying turn zero, I mean before your first turn actually even happens, it is possible to win in Commander. Because, yeah, Commander is a format where a lot of crazy things can happen. Now, will they happen? We shall see. That being said, on today's episode, gonna be going through some exciting turn one, no, turn zero possibilities. And actually, when it comes to a turn zero win, there are a lot of different combinations, unexpected combinations, but the first one that kind of popped into my mind when I was like, you know what? It'd be kind of fun to talk about Morophon, a Commander that is typically utilized for tribal decks, although... I have utilized it for a different kind of deck, and uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that one. <laughs> Many others out there might have as well. And I decided, you know what, let's talk about a turn zero unexpected Morophon win. Now, Morophon is a 6-6 six, six shapeshifter with changeling, so it's every single creature type that costs 7. None of that matters. When it enters the battlefield, just a creature type. That does matter. And it says, spells the chosen type you cast, cost Wilbur Glass to cast. This effect reduces only the amount of colored mana you pay. Other creatures you control the chosen type get plus plus one. So, Morphon is typically used, again, as a tribal commander. Basically, hey, pick any tribe. Doesn't matter what they are. This can basically fill in as a commander for that tribe, giving you cost reduction and a little anthem there as well. That being said, again, the cost reduction can be very, 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 very broken in certain circumstances. Unexpectedly broken. So... Let's now talk about a card to really set ourselves up. So we're talking about this Arc Commander. Let's talk about the hand now. First up, a card that you desperately need if you are going to be pulling off a turn zero win, Late Line of Anticipation. And actually, there's some reprints recently, finally down to just around a dollar. Late of Anticipation is an enchantment for four mana in total. When it's in your opening hand, you may begin the game with it on the battlefield. So essentially, like the other Ley Lines, you just get this into play for free. And that is huge because this one says you may cast spells as though they had flash. So essentially, yeah, you can play on someone else's turn. Again, which is a requirement, obviously, if you want to be able to win on turn zero. Because, again, your friend over there is like, okay, I'm playing. And you're like, no, 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 no. I'm actually playing. Sure, you just, you know, you took your turn, you played your land, whatever. Whatever you're doing, now it's my turn. I can actually react to this. I'm going to play my, well, Leyline already comes into play. And then because I can play with Flash now, I'm going to do some pretty crazy things. Like, you know what? Lotus Petal. Basically, the OG treasure, essentially. All treasures are basically Lotus Petal these days, right? Kind of. Anyways, an artifact for zero. Tap, sacrifice it. Make one mana of any color. So there you go. Basically a way to see. Let's get things started. And again, normally, obviously, you couldn't just flash that out. But because of a lot of anticipation, you can. So do so. And then cast something that is quite broken, quite brutal, quite awesome. Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual is an instant for a single black mana. Add black, black, black to your mana pool. Yeah, this was one of the <laughs> five cards, I think an alpha, right? That, you know, they made one of each color that each cost one and gave you like three of something. And like... Lightning Bolt was good, right? Ancestral Recall is broken and banned many places. Draw three cards. And then Green's like, Giant Growth. Okay, cool. And then White's like, Healing Solve. I think that's that one, right? Prevent three damage or gain three life. This one's no, no, you get mana, which of course is absurdly, absurdly powerful, especially again when you're trying to do some crazy thing like this. So yeah, a ritual effect like this is obviously very necessary. And with that, well, we need just one more mana. So yeah, we're, we're getting kind of mana desperate early. This It's fine though. We're fine. Okay. It's going to be a big explosive turn because we also have Simeon Spirit Guide. A 2-2 Ape Spirit that no one actually ever really plays, for the most part, <laughs> calls 2 and a red. It says, exile it from your hand, add red to your mana pool. So essentially, yeah, here's a free mana to work with. Now, again, we use Lotus Petal for a black mana. We cast Dark Ritual if we have three black at our mana pool. Now we have a red at our mana pool, so we have red, black, black, black. It doesn't really matter what, you know, the uh, other colors are. We just need the red mana because, hey, we got Treasonous Ogre. Four mana in total for a 2-3 Ogre Shaman with Dethrone. That does not matter. That costs three in a single red mana. So, again, we can actually pay for this on turn zero thanks to our ritual type effects. And, um, yeah, again, thanks to that flash from Layla of Anticipation, we can play it out. And it says, pay three life at red your mana pool. Now, 
in uh, you know normal formats. So you know that costs you. Know, they have 20 life. You know you basically you can go up to what like 18 life paid, and that's six mana. Cool. In commander we can basically double that. A little more than that actually so yeah in commander we can go up to what 13 times we do this essentially 13 man right 39 life paid in total going down to one life we don't actually need to go that far let's talk about exactly how far we need to go though because again with this free mana again we went ritual 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 essentially going into an even bigger creature ritual kind of thing essentially we are going to utilize two mana so six life from the lovely trees of ogre to play impact tremors impact tremors is an enchantment for one in a red whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control impact tremors deal one damage to each opponent so we are setting ourselves up we are saying hey this is the win condition that we are going to utilize opponents try to stop me with your no uh, anything you can do essentially again it's turn zero it's turn zero you're not gonna be able to stop me so essentially what i'm gonna be doing now is gonna be playing our lovely commander again for seven mana again 21 life we can pay it right we're only down to what if my math is correct what like 27 13 life total are we back down to 13 i think we are so we have you know all the more fun in play now we, we ping our opponents for one ow that's not going to finish them off, though. Obviously, another up 39. More fun again, though. When it enters the battlefield, we choose a creature type. And actually, there are certain creatures that can actually work with this other than just the one I'm going to be bringing up. But the creature type we're going to be choosing for this specific example is Drake. Drake is what we're going to be choosing because a very spicy, old and janky card, Shrieking Drake. A 1-1 Drake that costs a single blue mana with flying, I believe it's from Visions. When it enters the battlefield, bounce a creature you control back to its owner's hand. And it doesn't say another creature you control. It does not specify that Wizards lately has been changing that around a lot of the time and forcing you to actually choose another one. This one does not. So what you are doing essentially is saying, okay, um... Again, I chose Drake, so this costs a blue less to cast, meaning that it is free for us to play. We play it, Impact Tremors triggers, pings all of our opponents. Then this says, hey, uh, you got to bounce something back to your hand. You're like, oh, okay, bounce a Shrieking Drake. Goes back to your hand. You do it again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And, I mean, essentially, you do this, what, uh, 38 times on top of the first time that you did it? So there you go. Your opponents have been pinged down, again, on turn zero. Now, is this a likely amount of cards you're going to get in your hand? Every single one of these cards you're going to get? No, but could it happen? Yes, technically, it could happen. And it's just kind of fun to actually figure out these turn zero combination wins and craziness that can happen in a game like Commander. But of course, there are other turn zero wins. And actually, I did an entire episode on some turn zero wins a while back that came to my mind. And just recently, I don't know why these popped back in my head, but they did. So yeah, you get to see a, another turn zero win combination. Other kinds of cards that you can be considering when you're trying to do some brokenly crazy things like this. First up, again, yes, we do need that ley line of anticipation essentially in that opening hand to actually really make this work. Most of the times you're probably going to need that because being able to play a flash speed is kind of a requirement to win on someone else's turn. So there you go. So of course, next up, we've got Lotus Petal. So again, Lotus Petal will help us out. This time though, we're going to be sacrificing it for a blue instead of a red. So again, thank you so much, Lotus Petal. Thank you, Original Treasure, essentially for helping us out with that. Next up, a bit of an expensive card, I will admit, Mana Crypt. <laughs> there's other kind of cards that you could potentially, there's other ways that you could potentially get this to work this is the easiest one to get two free mana though zero mana artifact beginning of your upkeep flip a coin if you lose the flip deals three damage to you we're, we're not going to be getting to our upkeep because again we're going to be winning on turn zero that does not matter anyways tap four to mana essentially so basically say free soul ring with a slight downside but not really and then we've got well the card that we are utilizing this blue and two to actually play and that is show and tell a crazy crazy cool card and i will mention technically Technically, technically speaking, this could be an opportunity for opponents to somehow stop you if they basically have the right card in their hand to stop you in this weird situation. A source for two and a blue. Each player may put an artifact, creature, enchantment, or land card from their hand on the battlefield. There is technically a way that they could stop you if they happen to put down the right thing, okay? I will mention that. So again, this is technically a riskier combination, but still one that probably would just work and win the game for you. Because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be putting down, well, an artifact, creature, or enchantment, or land. Let's guess what it is. Anyone want to guess real quick in the comments below? It is Omniscience. A crazy, powerful, and good card. One that usually takes you nearly the entire game to get out because this is an enchantment that costs seven blue, 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 which is 10 mana in total. But we are actually just cheating this out again on turn zero. You may cast an all my cards from your hand up, paying their mana cost. 
So, essentially, you know what? Now you can just cast spells from your hand for free. Again, at flash speed, thanks to Land of Anticipation. An absurd combination of those two cards in play again on turn zero. And, of course, there's a lot of different ways that you can win from here. One way that I do want to point out is just a pretty fun way, well, for you, maybe not for your opponents, and that's with Conflux. Conflux is a sorcery for eight mana in total, three in Wooburg. Search life for a white card, a blue card, a black card, a red card, and a green card. Reveal those cards, put your hand, then shuffle. So, basically, you are, again, playing this eight mana spell for free on your opponent's first turn before you actually even have a turn to tutor for five cards. And of course, there's plenty of combinations that you could utilize to win with that. Or you could be like me and be like, maybe I'll actually tutor for um, a uh, regrowth. Yeah, well, let's just tutor for regrowth. Go get a card like this, sorcery for one day green. Return to our card in your grave to your hand. Again, Conflux does not exile. Many tutors like that might, but this one does not. So essentially, hey, um, you can just get it back. And then you can go tutor for another Rego type effect and get it back again. And keep tutoring for five cards at a time, essentially, as long as you've got the right kind of cards in your deck, the right makeup of different color cards in your deck, you can actually probably draw nearly your entire deck, or probably you, you definitely could draw your entire deck with Omniscience in play in the right deck setup. That being said, yeah, the game's got to end at some point, so of course, yeah, you could just win with, well, we've already mentioned it, Impact Tremors, which is a red card, of course, that you could tutor for in the initial Conflux, get that into play, play for free with the Omniscience, and of course, Shrieking Drake, which again, you can just keep playing for free again and again and again. With Omniscience, obviously, you do not even need Morophon in play to reduce that cost, so yeah, again, there's a lot of other combos that you can utilize to win, just another one to keep in mind. And finally, just a slightly different setup. Let's say that we took a different turn. Instead of playing Conflux, we've got our same setup, okay? We've got Leyline in play. We've got Omniscience in play. We just showed Intellit in play. What is another card that could potentially be a big, splashy way to finish out the game in a turn zero win? Well, what is crazier than this next one? Enter the Infinite. A sorcery for eight blue, 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 blue. That's right, 12 mana in total. Draw cards equal to the number of cards in your library. Then put a card from your hand on top of your library. You have no maximum hand size until your next turn. Crazy. Uh, basically, hey, draw your whole deck. Yep, there's plenty of ways to win from there, of course. Uh, especially when you can then cast your whole deck for free because you've got Omniscience in play. So this one, essentially, again, there's plenty of ways to win from this. Uh, but basically, you know what? Here's just a simple one that I'll throw out there. Aether Flux Reservoir. You play this again, you can play it for free. It says, whenever you cast a spell, gain one life for each spell you cast this turn. Pay 50 life, deals 50 damage to our creature player. Again, if you have your entire deck drawn and you can play everything for free, well, just do that. And then every single time, you're going to be gaining more and more life. Again, the first spell that you cast, you're going to gain one. Well, technically, you've already cast a good amount of spells this turn. So it's like gain eight, then gain nine, then gain ten. You're going to be able to get well over, well, the, the goal would probably be, what, 150 life, at least 151 life, so that you can then ping, ping, ping each of your opponents, and they are all gone. Of course, there's plenty of other ways that you could win while drawing your entire deck, but yes, this is just one that I wanted to point out. So I hope that you enjoyed this thought experiment. Now again, is this likely to pull off? Building an entire deck around turn zero wins? Yeah, I mean, like, you could technically pull it off. It's very rare to pull off, obviously, because you need a near-perfect hand to make it happen, which is highly likely to get. That being said, I love doing these kind of thought experiments. And actually, I love hearing from you on them and telling me, hey, this is actually the combo that I made. This is the turn zero combo that I made that can do with even less cards. Because, obviously, the less cards that you need and they're kind of the more the more uh, repeat effects that you have of certain cards, the more likely you'd be able to actually pull these kind of really crazy combos off. But yeah, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on these. What other kinds of cards would you be considering? If you are interested in any of these cards I mentioned and pulling something crazy off like this, make sure you check out that card list link in the description below. Comment below with your thoughts. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support.